Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about understanding graphics card performance. So what do I mean by that? I mean when you go on a forum and you're some guys like, you know, oh, I just got this graphics card and it runs game X at 150 FPS. And then he doesn't give any more detail. Well, I'm going to explain to you guys all of the different factors that you need to consider when you want to determine if a graphics card is going to run the games you want the way you want to run them. So here's a perfect example. I've got an older video card. This is a Radeon 4850 and I'm running it at 1080p with 50 FPS. So that's pretty good, right? It's a pretty great graphics card. Well, check this out. I have to have the details turned down so low at 1080p that you see this tree right here. Compare it to the tree next to it in terms of the detail level. I had to crank everything down in this game to get playable frame rates at 1080p. Maybe that's not how I want to play my game. See, watch what happens when I move a little bit closer. All of a sudden, that tree turns into a real tree but it's not that far away and it turns into just a big old block of pixels. So we're going to talk about all of the different factors that affect the performance of your games and why a high-end graphics card delivers a better gaming experience. Okay guys, let's talk about the biggest differentiating factor in terms of the overall playability of a game as well as the biggest drain on your GPU's resources, that is resolution. So resolution is, in layman's terms, how many dots vertical by how many dots horizontal, and it is how many pixels you are displaying overall. So what, resol what, what resolution gives you is smoother lines versus, uh, compare, it, uh, compare it, say for example, to NES, so where Mario is made up of very large blocks, that's very low resolution because each of those blocks is a pixel, compared to something like Battlefield Bad Company 2, where there are actually very, very, very tiny dots making up the overall image, that is now high resolution. So why does resolution increase the amount of power needed by your graphics card? Well, every pixel needs to be calculated and rendered separately, which means that the more pixels you have, the higher the resolution you're playing at, the more GPU power you need. So that is why when someone says to you, oh, well, I get 120 FPS in that game, it's pretty meaningless because, well, what are they running it at? Are they running it at old school 800 by 600, which is about half a million pixels? Are they running at 720p, which is what most console gamers would be used to, which is about a million pixels? Or are they running it at full 1080p, which is 2 million pixels? So that is, in terms of just sheer pixel count actually a doubling of what is being asked from your graphics card. Maybe they're even running at an HD plus resolution with a 30 inch monitor like 2560 by 1600. That's 4 million pixels so it requires a lot more power. However, if you have extra performance left over with your graphics card, resolution is the big one and I'm going to show you why. So we're running at 720p right now and I want you to focus on a couple of things in particular. One of them is uh, here, if I can just get away from this smoke a little bit. That's actually pretty annoying. Okay, there we go. So one of them is this telephone wire. Can you see in the telephone wire, especially as it sways in the wind, that the, it turns into a staircase? That's because of lower resolution. I'm running at only 720p right now. Same thing with this tree right here. You can see that the leaves, instead of having any real definition, especially up here at the top, just look like um, kind of a blocky blob. So let's go ahead and change it to 1080p, which like I said, isn't even the highest resolution you can run at. And resume the game. And let's look at the same image again. So you can see there's far more definition to the, to the overall shape of this tree. And when you look at the telephone wire, there's not nearly as much staircasing. Now, this is the highest resolution we can reach with this display. So without getting an HD plus display, what can we do about this? That's what we're gonna talk about next. So what Cameraman and I discovered is that in Battlefield Bad Company 2, there actually isn't a dramatic impact on the overall image quality of the game from turning textures up, nor is there a dramatic impact from turning up the overall level of detail. Now one thing we did notice a big difference from was the effects setting. So you can see here, let's, uh, let's have a look at the smoke as in particular. Now effects can be any number of things. It can be uh, physics, it can be smoke, it can be explosions but having a higher level of effects 
is going to make smoke appear more billowy and less sort of like a segmented uh, caterpillar. And uh, here, so I'll go back to low so that you guys can have a look. And I'm just going to try and find whoever's shooting me so that I can... Oh, no, it looks all good. Okay, so I'm going to go back to low quality so you guys can see the difference there. Now, none of these settings are having a huge overall effect on the performance in this game. But hopefully you can see the difference there. It looks like Call of Duty Black Ops is going to actually give us a better look at texture quality versus low texture quality. So here, right now, I'm running the game. I've got about 90 FPS going on here, and I have my texture quality set to high. So we're looking at a tile floor. So what's going to happen if I go into my detail settings and I turn my texture quality to low? Apply yes. Go back into the game. Now I'm looking at sort of a muddy brownish thing that maybe I can walk on, hard to say. So that is the dramatic difference that texture quality can make to your gaming experience, although you can see my FPS is still the same because texture quality more than anything else is dependent on having enough video card memory, although there is a small impact on performance in terms of your GPU as well. So fast GPU does help. Now we're going to go ahead, turn the texture quality back up to extra, but we have our AF, or anisotropic filtering, turned all the way down. So I'm going to show you guys what that means. Now the textures up close look about as good as they're going to get. We can see the carpet, we can see the tiles, but what about far away? It starts to get not as sharp looking when you're further away. So you can see into this hallway and into uh, Castro's bedroom. I'm going to go ahead and turn the AF all the way up. So AF is a detail level thing that allows us to make textures look better further away. Now, that tile floor and even the tile floor in, in Castro's room are very, very defined looking. So the conclusion, guys, is that really there's a lot more to FPS, that is video card performance, than just resolution even. And there's a lot more to it than just can you run the game. Yes, you can run the game, but are you running it the way it is meant to be enjoyed? Uh, that depends. So we've still got our 4850 on the test bench here, and I'm going to show you guys the extreme example, the most extreme example I can come up with, of how much of a difference there can be in performance when you're running a game at the lowest possible detail settings. In this case, I'm running at 720p with horrible shadows and all the, the textures and details and everything turned way down. Now I'm going to stand here where I'm getting about 90 to 100 FPS and I'm going to change the detail levels all to the highest that they go. Hi, hi. I'm going to turn up my anti-aliasing. I'm going to turn up my AF. I'm going to turn up my resolution to 1080p, which like I said is not even the highest it goes. Yeah, I want to keep that. And let's go back into the game. And we are running at 8 FPS. So, when you're discussing video card performance, yes, there is a huge, huge difference depending on the settings you're using, the game you're playing, and it is never as simple as, my card runs that game awesome, it gets 100 FPS. Well, depends how you want to enjoy it. So if you are using an older graphics card, and you do find yourself having to turn down all the details and turn down your res, you might want to consider an upgrade. Right now, a great value is the GTX 560 Ti, but depending on when you're watching this video, that recommendation may or may not be relevant. So, please, guys, Guys, leave a comment under the video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe as well. But let me know if there's anyone on a forum or anyone that you know that you're going to try and explain this to now that you've had that exact conversation with where they tell you, oh, this card's so great it gets however many FPS and they give you no details whatsoever about what that meant.